Aloha, it's 365 Hawaii with Eric and Julie Zemelis and behind us is Kaavaloa Trail, which you might know as the Captain Cook Monument Trail. And uh, we are going to try this today because it's January. It's a good time to do a hot trail on a cold January morning. So also, but we're also doing this trail also because of that is because this trail has becoming a lot more popular these days. And what's happening is that uh, there's a lot of things that people don't know about this trail that it's causing some, it's, it's always caused problems because at the end of the day, it's a long way down to the bottom. I think we're at 1800 feet and it's 1800 feet down and it's almost two miles going down and two miles coming back up and so a lot of people get tired especially because it's a lot of this trail is right in the sun in the afternoon so it tends to really to, to really bake people and get them tired and there's some rolly rocks on this trail as well in terms of like you know loose 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 rocks too so we just want to go through and give you guys some tips on how to do it so everybody does it correctly and we have no problems here right so even if you'd only watch the first three seconds of this video um, the three things to remember is making sure you wear close toed shoes you bring plenty of water Pack out what you pack in. We just talked to a woman who said that a bunch of people had left their uh, beach chairs and uh, flippers down at the bottom. No pono. Um, so uh, we're going to show it to you guys and help you guys enjoy it, but also know that it is becoming more traveled. And we are actually going to come down here and actually talk to one of the women that um, helps clear this trail and plant uh, actually um, uh, endemic species. So you'll get something new out of this uh, trip as well. So let's go hike. First tip for this going down there is parking. And the answer is parking is always a hot commodity here. It's uh, all the way to the main, uh, the main highway gets filled pretty quickly. There's probably 30 cars there. It's 9.30 in the morning on a Sunday morning. And if they have to, they kind of park around the corner going that way uh, down uh, the, uh, towards the south on the main highway 11. Uh, so uh, try to park correctly. Everybody kind of sometimes parks in haphazard ways and it causes problems. So if you kind of remember, there's gonna be a lot more people behind you and park correctly. Okay, so I forgot my hiking sticks, but you know what? They have plenty sitting here at the trailhead. Look at this. So uh, you can pick a stick. Um, you're going to need it on the way back up. I'm telling you, your knees will thank you for it. But also, I want you guys to see this real quick. Do you guys see how this is all kind of cut down? This does not happen naturally. And the county certainly doesn't cut this down. It's volunteers and people who care about the trails that are making sure that the cane grass does not draw up to 14 feet and goes over your head. So um, hopefully we're gonna meet one of these volunteers on the trail. You wanna talk about pure aloha? Can you imagine that people care enough about people who are constantly walking out of here dehydrated that they would leave free water bottles for you to start your trail with just to take care of you? That's Hawaii. Also Hawaii, we get once in a while we get these abandoned vehicles and this is looks like a Jeep from about 1978. Looks like it's been here a while. As you know, we're in South Kona and uh, there are uh, a lot of feral pigs out here in South Kona. And this is sort of looks like a pig highway down here. You can see they've pulled up the fence. They've been chewing all the way through and they, they grub through the ground and they're looking for, uh, for insects and bugs and things like that, but they don't actually eat uh, anything they can find. And also it's a little worn. They tend to go into the cane grass and make their little, little dens in there. So uh, here you go, all the pigs. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one today. Remember those people we said we were going to introduce you to? Here they are. Yeah. This is Ari and Steve. Steve, yep, yep. Steve, and they're going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing, why, and how long they've been doing it for. Go ahead, Ari. Yeah, so I started working on this trail during COVID because it was very narrow and hot mm -hmm. and it wasn't safe for people and I didn't want them to get heat stroke. Mm. I'd been an environmental scientist in Florida and I had to rescue some surveyors and old sugar cane in the heat mm. and it scared the death, scared me to death when I found them there close to death. Wow. So that's why I want to keep the trail wide but my grandmother taught me she's First Nation. Always leave the trail better than you find it which is always thinking of the community and always bring extra for the friends you meet. So I carry extra water and Steve, mm -hmm. tell you why he's working on the trail. Well, I met I met Ari on the trail about a, about a year ago mm -hmm. and she was doing this all by herself with a lopper and I was like, it looks like you need help. <laughs> and the grass was 13 feet high on both sides and you mm -hmm. push, push through it and it's got teeth on it. So mm -hmm. it cuts you in the arm mm -hmm. and, um, and it's hot as hell. <laughs> it, it really does. It, it traps the humidity yeah, in the does. space. Yeah, yeah so, because of the trans evaporation. Yeah. Oh, thank the you. The plants <laughs> evaporate mm -hmm. w with the heat. And in Florida, it's so much yeah. with the trans evaporation, it creates clouds in the afternoon. Wow. So the yeah. plants are doing that. That's why we need it wider. So instead of a sauna that cuts you, we want the trail to be wide and let some breeze in and keep people cool. Happy, and safe. 
and hydrated and yeah. yeah. And maybe they won't be surprised by a feral pig. Okay, so when you see these little number signs, it doesn't mean that we've just walked a mile. We haven't. Uh, but it gives away that if anything happens to you on the trail, if you use the numbers, at least EMS can find you. Um, but like we were talking about before, um, don't make that happen to yourself just by making sure that you carry enough water. Okay, so earlier up the trail, we were talking about the Milo tree, and they, uh, the people that we were talking to said that they've been planting them systematically on the way down. Well, here's one. Look at this. It's, all, it's growing like crazy. I mean, it doesn't take you that long for those trees because everything grows in Hawaii. Trail marker number four. So this is kind of the end of the guinea grass and the call things and then going through the little kind of tunnel place even though they've opened it up. And now it's starting to open up a little bit. There's been uh, cows through here as they've cut some of it back. And the holicoa is just about to disappear. We're about ready to see the uh, ocean and the, you'll see the bay to the left of us. So it's right past this one. So let's go check it out. There's three reasons why you go on this trail. One is to get your exercise, two is to jump into the bay, and three is to get this view. This is the coolest view. The guys up at the top said, make sure that right after mile marker four, you stand here and you're gonna get a chance to like see spouting whales and all the beauty in front of you, and this is that spot. This makes it all worth it. Of course, I haven't finished the entire trail yet, but this so far is making it worth it. These rocks are a killer at any age. If you step on these things and you roll, you are going to roll your ankle. So that's another reason why they tell you to wear closed-toed shoes. And just be careful, especially down here, you guys, seriously, it is roly-poly with these lava rocks. So uh, you don't want to be actually have to be taken out if you're with a broken ankle. Trail marker number six. And what this is, the junction where it turns and it starts going down to the bay. And this is kind of the last third of the hike going down there. Uh, a little steeper, maybe a little more rocks, but not really. Uh, just the main thing is that it's turning and it's going down. And now you have a really good view of the bay and we're about 300 feet above the uh, ocean. Okay, after a good walk down and a slow walk because of our filming and talking to people, but uh, it was We're good. still down here, woo, we made yeah. it. Um, and it is beautiful down here. Um, of course, we're down here, uh, the fair winds behind us. Uh, they usually show up around uh, nine, they leave around like, I don't know, soon. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, lunchtime. So we're gonna actually have a little picnic, but uh, one of the things that's nice about being down here right now is the fact that um, there's actually not that many people in the bay. Yeah, proportionally, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, We've been here where this place is nothing but bumper to bumper people. Yeah, so if you come during the Christmas holidays, there's a boat every second <laughs> out here. But um, don't forget, this is a marine sanctuary. And one of the things that we always ask you guys to do is make sure that you wear a reef safe sunscreen, which is basically mineral sunscreen. And we brought our little tin of little hands Hawaii down with us. Um, so uh, just keep an eye on that because this is a very fragile ecosystem. might not think could happen to you while you're sitting here having your lunch is having a mongoose come up and actually eat your lunch while you're trying to swim. They are very clever and crafty and just like the chipmunks in Yosemite, um, they know and they see a tourist coming that's got a peanut butter sandwich. So um, one thing, Michelle Hebrick was, when you leave your pack out like that, and you say, hmm, is it gonna be safe? It's not about people. The lady up at the top said, there are little mobs of mongoose that eat your stuff and take your things. So uh, just, be prepared. Okay, so um, I've heard this enough times that I thought I'd share it with you. Um, so Captain Cook, our buddy here who uh, supposedly discovered the Hawaiian Islands, um, he actually met his death right here, right near on the water's edge, because when he was being chased by the Hawaiians, um, he couldn't jump in the water because he didn't know how to swim. That's right, here's a guy who had been an explorer on the open ocean for years, and his untimely death led to him, because he couldn't go out there and swim away, they murdered him right here. It smells like goat cheese. Yep.
Okay, just so you guys have an idea of like how long it takes. It took us 20 minutes from mile marker seven to five. And uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, you know, but uh, that's just like what we're a quarter of the way through. So uh, just giving you guys kind of like uh, some mile markers. Okay, back to mile marker four. And the beauty of mile marker four coming up is the trees are back. <laughs> and even having like, you know, it's not perfect shade, but I'm gonna say it cuts the sun by half is really nice. And also once you get to this point is that the, the trail gets a lot less steep. So the from five to seven down there, that's where the steep parts are actually. This wasn't so bad. The time to get here from the bay has been 33 minutes, but we stopped just a couple times to take a couple pictures. So as you know, they've been clearing out these little sections underneath the trees so you can take a break. We're sitting there, there's a little bench right here. It's really nice. One of the things that we want to do is actually we have uh, reservations for the Grand Teton National Park this summer and also in uh, Yellowstone. And one of the things we want to do is hike around uh, Jackson Lake and go up into the mountains. So this is the kind of trail that people on the islands train on to go out into the real world and go and do something that really kicks your butt. Okay, we found some younger people to actually talk to you guys about the true uh, aspect of this trail. Um, so what do you guys think in terms of it, how hard it is and how long it is and how hot it is? What do you guys think? Uh, I think as long as you're well prepared enough, um, it's really not too bad. Uh, I, I call it moderate on the easy, moderate, hard scale. Okay. Um, it's Have just, you climbed Mount Everest? Nope, no. definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Um, I mean, I like to think I'm in decent shape, but yeah. I'm obviously not like Grecian, anything crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so as long as you bring enough water and like can layer pretty well. Then, yeah. 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 And what's the best part? Bad. Well, so far, what's the best part of this whole trip that you've been on? We actually just got here yesterday. So. Ah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Things, so the first thing you guys wanted to do was come down this trail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys uh, found out that you could walk down to Calicacoo and go snorkeling through like, where'd you guys like get that from? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, like videos? Or did you guys do, like, did you get, did someone so, here tell you that? So I love all trails personally. Okay. Um, and this was one of the highest rated trails, uh, you know, along the Kona coast. Hmm. And I saw that we could do some snorkeling too. So figured we had a nice, like, pretty clear day. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and what they didn't realize, though, is it's the coldest day ever in Hawaii. <laughs> when you do this in August, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. It still felt pretty hot today. Yeah, I know, right? In the yeah. sun, it's pretty hot. Yeah. yeah. And then um, when you guys got into the bay, um, did you guys get in and out pretty easily? Yeah, uh, so we jumped in uh -huh. off of uh, the concrete wall, so right. that was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, and then had a few false starts coming back in mm -hmm. towards shore, just, mm -hmm. you know, keeping an eye out for where there were not urchins. Yes, right. yeah. urchins. So at least yeah. you guys know about that. Yeah. Did yeah, you go swimming with those on your, on your feet? I went barefoot. You did? Yeah. Okay, and you guys didn't have any problem getting out being barefoot? No, you can do it. No? Okay, see, yeah, but you do, you do I do watch. suggest water shoes, however, sometimes. Yeah, honestly, fair. If you don't have flippers, water shoes are probably a plus just to protect yourself yeah. a little more. Yeah. I considered going in these, but then the hike back up, I was nervous about. Oh, there you go. Yeah. The mud and don't be wet. Else. Yeah. Well, you guys did a really good job. They've been like bleeding neck and neck with us. These guys are kick ass, man. <laughs> uh, so I hope you guys have a great time the rest of the time you're here. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Go. Thanks, yeah, enjoy the so we just passed our friend Ari again. Still cleaning up the trail a couple hours later. But you know, I was thinking when Eric and I first moved here, um, we found out that a lot of the different beach parks had caretakers. And there were some like, you know, some older people who, that was basically their job was just to make sure that people got the rundown on how to treat the area, make sure that it kept nice, making sure that uh, a lot of the beach is keeping the drugs out. And uh, I just realized in speaking to her and seeing her care for this land, that she is the caretaker of this trail. And you know, Cindy Punihaule is the caretaker of Ka'alu'u Bay. There are these are special stewards of the land and the sea that uh, we all should uh, really know are out there and uh, really appreciate the effort they do to make sure the people are you know, keep coming to the places that we want to enjoy and share with our friends and our visitors. So, uh, here's to the stewards of the land. Okay, that was quite a hike up here, and uh, we are done. Woo! We are badasses. We are badasses. You know, both of us are almost, you know, I'm almost 59, and Eric's 58, and you know, we, we beat those younger people up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, yeah. um, get this, you guys. You know who sponsors this channel and who goes all the way down to the end of the bay to pick up the great, beautiful videos for you, hikes all the way back up here? That's we right, do. We do. Because you know what? We sponsor 365 White. We're the sponsors. Right. And so we have another channel, 365 Hawaii Real Estate Minute, and that's all for you if you are looking for real estate here in Hawaii. Right. Because we are realtors with Real Broker, and uh, we also have a uh, community group where we encourage volunteerism on uh, the island. So 
that you can give back and it's a lot of fun because you make new friends and then we also have um, all kinds of resources for moving and also making a great life here when you purchase property um, so the contact information is below but get a hold of us and um, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel yeah definitely make, Both it channels. Makes, makes it better so <laughs> yep. with that we say aloha